Welcome back everyone. So today I'm going to be working on a little movie prop project. Um, it's not going to be the complete build because a lot of the parts that I need, at least a couple of the main components, um, I'm waiting to show up. But I wanted to make this video so I can get maybe do like a two part uh, what we're going to go over today and then maybe just like the finished build later. But um, what really got me into this build is like most of the things I'm I'm a big movie fan and I like making I like making things but um, that's kind of what got me into making things um, I like to say um a lot um, uh, and uh, but uh, making like making your own costumes for uh, Halloween and stuff like that and yeah you can go buy some stuff but I, I like to be like go overboard and build stuff that go along with your costume so like you know like I made the minigun for Terminator 2 and I went as a Terminator obviously or stuff like that um, I built the flux capacitor using some Christmas lights and it's like an old electrical panel I think it was um, I actually might build another one of those that's a little bit more accurate so I might be another video at some point just making things for Halloween costumes kind of turned into something I really enjoy just making like props and you obviously watch movies and stuff like Back to the Future has so many different gadgets and cool things and I wanted to add the remote control that he uses um, the scene where they're standing out in the parking lot and like the car comes towards them I wanted to make that and add that to my collection so I picked up this remote control off of eBay. It's not the exact model that they used in the movie, and I'm okay with that. I don't want to be like crazy accurate because the one that they used for the film, it's hard to come by, and if you can find one, they're very expensive. But this is the same company brand, and I think it's pretty much the same size physically. So, I'm going to use that as the base model, and then add the, the lights and the switches and all that stuff. But I'm going to go over what I found online, as far as what they used originally. And the reason I'm doing that is because a lot of the stuff that I found, I really had to dig for. It's really hard to find, and not a lot of people build them, I guess, or just don't talk about it. I found tons and tons and tons of stuff about making your own flux capacitor like very detailed things but nothing about the actual remote and I found a few links um, and some forums I'm gonna put that in the description below as well as like all the parts that I'm using and um, the circuitry here that I'm gonna use to control it so like in the movie he moves that up and that's what accelerates the car and he has some switches over here in the panel for the lights, but I'm not sure if they actually used the remote to control the numbers or if they had a circuit, they just flipped a switch and then it counted up and he just kind of moved his finger along as it counted. But I'm actually using the internal components to move the numbers on the display. And I'll go over that a little bit later, but for now, I'm going to jump over to the computer and show you what I found, what I used, and my circuitry, and then uh, kind of jump back here and I'll show you the circuit in action, and then uh, go from there. First, I'm going to go over what I found online uh, as far as what I believe is the actual components that they used making this controller. Um, this is the base of the build. The FP-T8SGA-P green uh, PCM Futaba remote control. I went with FPT4NL. From what I can tell is the same size, maybe a touch smaller. As far as looks go other than having the switches 
on the top of the controller to me it looks pretty much the same and the one i got with shipping was like 15 bucks and i've actually seen some other ones that have been less than that this one here i found on ebay everybody knows what they're used for so and actually this one doesn't even have the green pcm on it but yeah it's it's ridiculous so if you're just looking for something that's like me you just want something that looks close but you don't want to spend a ton of money and i have found online a couple etsy sites i think it's doc's prop shop has one similar to what i'm building as far as the controller itself and i think that one was like 200 bucks but for me uh having the prop and making it myself is a little bit more enjoyable than just paying somebody it paying somebody else that I can learn something from it and actually by doing so I've found out a lot of information and then I can share it with you guys so this box here that box in the back was made by this company and the model 140 uh, the 100 series I didn't try contacting this company because on a thread I found it said that Either they don't usually respond, or if they do, you basically have to buy a large amount of these in order to place an order. And since I only want one, that's probably not going to work. If you click the PDF thing, I already have it open. If you have a 3D printer, it's got pretty much everything you're going to need, uh, I would think, to design your enclosure for a 3D printer. The display that they used in the movie was by the Stanley company and the model was S5000B. These are pretty much impossible to find. Looks like everybody's 3D printing them. I did find a picture of kind of how they're made. LEDs stuck in there and that gives you the eight segment or excuse me the seven segment display. And that's how, how it's laid out. I'm just using regular LED seven segment displays so this was the enclosure that I ended up picking and I went through tons of different sites looking for something that was as close as I could get to the dimensions for what they use the one the box that I just showed you was I'll just give you the dimensions quick 5.30 by four inches by one and a half inches and this was the closest thing I could find and this is actually still on back order so I'm waiting that's why I'm doing the video too is like I don't have all the components and I don't want to wait to make the video so maybe I'll just do like a two-parter here but I figured I would share what I found and if anybody's interested in making one themselves then you have the information this piece here it's kind of hard to see in this picture but it just says uh, stop that's the back side this is actually called a Molex switch. Molex model 1820. This is actually a push button switch. For the movie, all it was was it lit up when he flipped this on. But that actually, they put that stop label on. <clears throat> Originally, it was like a push button too. So that's why there's three connections on the back. Two are for the switch and then one's just for lighting up this. And that's the, light, the connection that you're going to use to this switch. Yeah, it's like I you I bought one from this guy, but it had a different label on it I'm just gonna paint it all black and then I'm gonna try and cut some translucent uh, red acrylic on the laser and then glue that in there and then I'll have my quote-unquote stop light uh, Here's the label maker for all the stuff that he puts on the back pretty much any of the back to the future props they have all have that red label on them like on the flux capacitor and some of the time circuit stuff that's on the console so you want to get one of those and these are some of the switches that are on the back again over here and there's a couple toggle switches over here and uh, i'm not exactly sure the models of these but i found one that was like a waterproof toggle switch that's what i used for this one i found a couple different the ones that turn on the light switch or stop switch this was from Napa. This one was like a little bit cheaper than what's on Amazon, but it's basically the same thing. Uh, here's the waterproof switch. Some of the stuff you could get through 
my segment displays. If you go to and it's Mauser Electronics, Digikey, and Jamco or Jameco, I'm not sure how you pronounce it. You could probably buy the individual like switches that you want to get, and they have a lot more variety. And you go online, they'll show your pictures and stuff. But ordering what you need, like uh, like this one, it's like I'm not gonna need five switches. It's like I only need one, but I build a lot of stuff, so it's not like a waste for me. Or if I want to make another controller, and then it has the nine volt connectors that are on the back of the remote. This is what I use to control. I'll get into that a little bit, but. I use this to control the, using the remote, make the display count up to 88 miles an hour. This is just a 9 volt connector for the Arduino. And this is the clip that holds it on the back here. If you can see it, yeah, like right there. And I believe this is as close as you can find to what they used for the back of the remote. That one looks a little bit taller in this picture. I'm not sure if it's exact. I'm not 100% accurate on this build. I just want it to look close. All right, so I found this circuit online. And before I go over that, I'd be like, I would definitely recommend getting an account for Tinkercad. It doesn't cost anything and it lets you like design circuits. And there's actually like a 3D modeling thing on there too. I haven't played around with that, but it's nice because I know a little bit about electronics, but not enough to just go like, hey, I need this, this, and this, and build it, put it together, and like not worry about it like burning up. So with this, it lets you uh, run a simulation. And this was the actual circuit I used. I found this, but I removed the servo and then added the, the third segment on there. If you hit simulation, it comes on. And then it lets you actually like test it out. So that's from zero to 99. And the nice thing also about, uh, I'll link this in the description as well, because it has the code to run all this and there's a lot of it, and I've never done any of this coding stuff, so it worked out well that I found this, but yeah, there's a ton of stuff in here, so like you can just do what I did and just copy and paste it and upload it to your Arduino, which I did, and it does work. I think that's about it as far as going over stuff on the computer. All right, so this is the controller that I'm using. And this is the stick that I'm going to be using to control the speed, speed, because um, that's what the, the one he used in the movie. So when you move the stick up and down, it's turning this potentiometer. Unfortunately, it doesn't turn it throw to throw. So uh, I set it, I turned took this cap off and turned it with my circuit hooked up so that when I'm all the way up it displays 88 and I think when I go down it only goes down to 65 which is fine I don't really care that much I just want it so when I it kind of gives it a little bit more realistic feel even though I'm probably just gonna have it on a shelf and then flip the on switch on so that it says 88 when somebody wants to see it. Other than that, I really don't need zero to 88. If you got it hooked up backwards, the numbers will count. Like if you go, the way I have it set up, it goes up, it goes to 88, down, counts down. But if you hook it up the other way, it'll just work in reverse. So keep that in mind. So I get everything laid out here without touching my wires. So I don't short something out. And my nine volt connector for the Arduino. I'm just going to plug it in. I'm going to put a switch on it when I get it done, but you can see the numbers count down and it only goes to 65. If the potentiometer would actually rotate the full distance open to close or whatever you want to call it, full turn, it would count because I put another potentiometer before I hooked this up and it worked fine. 
So it's just a matter of your preference. Maybe you could take it apart and figure out how to make it turn farther. But for me, this will work fine. As far as wiring goes, so you can see better here. Clones up and down. And I forgot to mention, I forgot the value to add that to the item list that you'll need. And I cannot remember offhand what those were, but you'll need seven, maybe eight, depending. I might, uh, I don't currently have the decimal point lit up. I would, and that shows up in the movie, so I'm gonna try to add another one there. But other than that, that's how I got this wired up. And then I'm gonna put all this Probably use a. Oh, I thought I had some circuit boards that I could show you. That I don't know where I have them hidden right now. Basically, just a board that you can put all your components on, solder it on the back, and you have to put some jumpers in or whatever. But a very basic circuit board. Uh, unless you're into making up your own circuitry using uh, the etching methods and all that stuff, I don't really want to mess with that because that can get pretty involved I guess and I don't know anything about it and I don't want to start learning something in the middle of this project on top of all this other stuff that I'm trying to learn like Arduino stuff <clears throat> well that's going to wrap it up for now guys um, I'm going to do like a part 2 and then when I get all the parts I'll show how I assemble the controller and do all the wiring and all that kind of stuff but for now I just wanted to share the the knowledge that I found on all this stuff, there's a lot of stuff that it took quite a bit of digging to find and even then I didn't really come up with a ton of stuff and I'll share with share with you what I found and then hopefully you can go from there and do some more research yourself but I think I got the basics covered here and it's a good starting point so until next build, see you later guys, thanks for watching.